This episode of the Intrepid Podcast is sponsored by Ground News. More on them later. There is a recent Rappler article which featured a community of the Marian Crusade of St. Pius X in a remote Cebu hamlet. For those who may not know, the MCSPX is the more radical splinter group of the much more known Traditional Catholic Society of St. Pius X, or SSPX, with some pundits and personal contacts of mine jokingly perceiving the group as the SSPX of the strict observance, much like the Trappists were the more hardcore splinter group of Cistercians. In a nutshell, the group broke off from the SSPX and held that all the pronouncements of the Second Vatican Council were quote-unquote heretical and called for a return to tradition, particularly in the way the Mass was offered prior to Vatican II, which we all know as the traditional Latin Mass. There are many things that we can talk about how Vatican II caused quite a stir in the Church in the late 20th and early 21st centuries, but suffice it to say that groups like the MCSPX are a symptom of the problem of relativism and the abasement or devaluation of Catholic liturgy. However, this is not the first time such depictions were exposed in the media, and on this episode of the Intrepid Podcast, we'll be reviewing the 1973 British TV film, The Catholics, because that's the first time that this issue has been shared in a widespread manner ever. So with that said, the Intrepid Podcast starts now. Hi, I'm Ian Rignon, an independent alternative media practitioner, among other things, including being a Catholic adhering to the sense of the sacred. And welcome to another episode of the Intrepid Podcast. The Catholics is a 1973 made-for-television film broadcast over ITV in the United Kingdom. Although the plot of the story and the Brian Moore novel the movie was based upon were set at the end of the 20th century, and at the turn of the 21st. Across the pond, CBS acquired the airing rights for the film in the United States, but ha- changed its title to, qu- to Conflict. Now, I will be sharing some major, major spoilers for this film. So if you haven't watched it, you're in luck as it is in the public domain, especially on YouTube. A high-quality version of the film will be linked in the YouTube description and in the Spotify and Substack show notes so that you can watch it. Now, if you have already done so or you don't mind getting spoiled, well, buckle up because this is going to be one heaven or hell of a skinny. Pun intended. Now, as mentioned earlier, the story is set in the late 1990s or early 2000s, which disregarding the limitation of mechanical technologies of the time and the lack of the development of the nascent internet is very much accurate. The main characters were centered on a monastic order which probably follows the rule of St. Benedict as the monks were dressed in habits with scapulars and cowls and are living the dual domestic ora et labora life. Now, the movie began in what could be described as an act of pushing back against the abolition of the TLM, complete with worshippers from around the world. Some history buffs and observers even compared it with a period in the British Isles when Catholics are outrightly persecuted, especially in Ireland. However, in Rome, the order's top brass seem to have abandoned their habits for posh street clothes, and exchanged orthodoxy with relativism due to the catholic church at that in that timeline and i have to e- emphasize that uh what i'm saying here is that uh is in that timeline it remains fictional to uh to console people out there caving in to the ways of the world and the false notion of, of ecumenism 
Now, the Order's apex superior, known in the story as the Father General, tasked a young idealistic American priest named James Kinsella, which was played by Martin Sheen, the father of Charlie Sheen, to shut down the traditional movement initiated by a group of Irish monks in a small monastery island off the coast of the mainland. Sounds familiar? Upon arrival on the island, Father Kinsella was greeted by the monastery's abbot, played by Trevor Howard, and in the initial conversation, Kinsella and the abbot were discussing the state of the Catholic Church in the story's timeline. There has since been three Vatican councils and a fourth is underway. I mean, goodness gracious me, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's something that I've been uh, dreading about. Several religious practices, which in our timeline is still alive and well, have been discontinued, such as confession as we currently know it, Liberation theology becoming a very big thing, thing, especially in South America, where even governments are being toppled because of the ideology, a possible Christian-Buddhist dialogue on syncretizing the two religions, and, to the dismay of the monks on, in that island, the change in perspective when it comes to the Eucharist, the most sacrosanct aspect of the Catholic faith, and the Mass, where it happens. Sounds familiar? And... It was revealed in the film that the monks were doing it what they could to live out the Catholic faith as they and generations before them know it, not only to express their anger towards the church, church's approach on teachings, especially in the liturgy, but also sending it as a very clear message to Father Kinsella in the film. As a way of keeping the peace, though, the abbot used his position to rein in the monks and remind them of the vow of obedience. Again, Sounds familiar? And yet, in a twist of irony, little do the monks know that the abbot himself has been experiencing a crisis of faith and was intending to resign as his abbotship, which Father Kinsella symbolically denied by tearing the letter before boarding the helicopter away from the island. Although by the end of the film, the monks were so close to catching the abbot red-handed after they prayed the Lord's Prayer in English. To visualize, since this is a podcast, this is the last scene in the film where the monastic characters perfectly recited the prayer while the abbot, after telling the monks that miracles happen when words become prayer, struggled to recite it while the viewer saw his face, which could be speculated to be of confusion, anxiety, and or dread. Then, The credits rolled. It was one brilliant way of providing an irony in multiple layers. The word became flesh, the word became flesh, or the word made flesh rather, made the prayer as we all know, and in the abbot's bidding, proceeded to recite it as a way of proving that miracles could happen when words become prayer, only to find himself lacking. Does Does that all sound familiar at this point? Well, I'm going to tell more of that in a bit, but first, allow me to thank the sponsor of this episode, Ground News. Now, as you may have heard previously here on the Intrepid Podcast, I have embraced the life of a news writer and freelance journalist at this point in my career. Honestly, it has challenges, but you know what? It has been liberating so far because, as I believe in, uh, because I also believe, as the guy upstairs said. The truth shall set you free. Now, there is an internal desire for folks like me to keep one's perspective about news stories balanced, even if there are biases when it comes to very sensitive issues which are too many to discuss. Now, as a writer, I incorporate my interest in history to make it investigative as much as possible, especially for news stories that may have been overlooked or underreported by the big guys in the media industry. And that's where Ground News comes in. Ground News is a platform created by a former NASA engineer that gathers news from about around 50,000 sources globally and counting and puts related articles in one place so you can easily compare coverage. It lets you see the story behind the story using data-driven analysis that looks at things like political bias, reliability, and ownership of news outlets, which is why I was convinced to sponsor them 
for this video. Now, for example, I have here uh, something related to the excommunication of Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano, an Italian bishop who, be who was once the apostolic nuncio to the, to, to the United States. Now, he was replaced, but then again, he fled uh, at an undisclosed location because of his opposition to Pope Francis. And eventually, uh, I'm just, uh, you know, TLDRing this at this point. Eventually, uh, the Pope was forced to excommunicate him because Vigano did not recognize uh, the, uh, the Pope's authority on things. So that's basically excommunicate. That's an excommunicate, uh, a case for excommunication. And you know, from where I see here, uh, there's a lot of sources that are leading to the left, and only uh, a handful that are leading to the right. However, the biggest chunk of it all is smack bang in the center at forty five percent of the bias distribution. And this is what I like, or this is what I personally am interested when it comes to uh, covering news stories such as this, especially in the context of the Catholic Church. And you know, I use ground news not only as a tool to make better news re reports and stories because as I said, I, I am involved in news writing and journalism, but also to help me personally identify the original article since a majority of them are just copy-pastes from uh of articles, rather, from the Associated Press, Reuters, Agence France Press, and other big news um, companies or b big news agencies out there. But, you know, it's uh, it also helped me as well analyze where the news sites are coming from. Now, as I said, uh, Ground News provides users with how many news sources cover the story, which site reported it with a left or right lean, and how much of it lean to the left or right or at the center. Now, personally, my favorite feature of Ground News is that each story consists of charts and breakdowns gauging on factuality, ownership, and which site broke the news first and how broad it has been reported across the world. You can actually choose from over 150,000 topics, locations, and people to follow so that you can easily track them on the My Feed tab. And you can also check in, uh, check rather your news bias via a personalized dashboard to track your reading habits. Another great feature of Ground News is its blind spot feature, where you can view news reports and stories that that left or right leaning sites and people, mind you, may have missed out on. And but at the end of the day, as someone somehow involved in media production and engagement, it is of utmost importance for everyone to have a balanced view of things, especially in this digital age where news practices have been put to the ultimate test. For that matter, you can access the topics on Ground News through its website or download the app for free. Yes, you heard me right. There is also a mobile app for you to read Ground News on the go and it's absolutely free. But if you upgrade to one of their premium subscription options, you will get access to extra features that would give you a greater perspective on the story behind the story beyond the basic stuff. So if you really want to know more about news stories behind the clutter, sign up today at check.ground.news. The link is also in the description and the Spotify and Substack show notes to get 15% off of your Ground News subscription. Again, that's check.ground.news. To get 15% off, 1-5 of your ground news subscription. I would like to thank Ground News for sponsoring this video and as I said, it has helped me with my job and it has helped me to improve my job and my perspective about things. So, let's get back to the topic. I am an independent alternative media practitioner as I always have in my opening spiel because I have studied this in my university years. I am applying a lot of stuff now and one of the things that I have um studied is film theory or anything that really that's related to films so cinematographically speaking the film was a product of its time it was produced in the 1970s late 60s early 70s and you know it's very much a product of its time as i said and 
what's what made it um different or what made it unique is that the abrupt and ambiguous ending has become a conversation starter firstly for british telly enthusiasts telly is the you know the slang for television uh in uh, in the commonwealth and uh in its general public and now on in the age of social media passing it down to catholics who wished to have a say in the preservation of the old liturgies now aside from martin sheen there are also, there are also a lot of uh very big stars or very big actors that starred in this film among the cast in the film was the late sir michael gambon more known globally as the jk rowling character albus dumbledore in the harry potter franchise he recently died on September 27, 2023 at the age of 82. There's also, as I said, Trevor Howard, and he was more known for his role as Captain William Bly on, uh, on Mutiny on the Bounty alongside Marlon Brando. He also starred on histo- uh, in historical films like The Charge of the Light Brigade and Battle of Britain. There's also Scottish actor Andrew Keir, uh, and he is more known for his roles in A Night to Remember, which is the 1958 film about the Titanic. And later on, in 1963, he starred in, in the film Cleopatra, where he played the Roman character Marcus Agrippa. Now, some social media comments read that the film was a high-fidelity adaptation of the book for the small screen, which could now be watched by curious historical and cultural film buff, buffs like me, in both micro screen and smart screen. Now, what makes it special or what makes this film special is that it accurately depicts the com- the confusion and the distortion that happened in the 1960s and 70s. I can personally speculate that perhaps the film was a hit piece against Vatican II and Pope Paul VI due to it being released a decade after the council, but I digress. Ultimately, I can agree with the assessment of Dr. Peter Kwasniewski when he said that The Catholics was a film that was ahead of its time. And I will also link uh, Kwasniewski's uh, analysis, uh, which is basically a Substack article, in the description below and as well as on the Spotify and Substack show notes. In short, the framing and timing was so accurate that it, rem- it remains prophetic in its message and nature to this day, especially for the 21st century church. When Tradiciones Custodes and an alleged scheduled pushback this month against Latin mass communities is about to happen. This also serves as a warning to those stupid enough to, to just welcome everyone and everything to the Catholic Church only to not apply its vetting process in the name of obedience or the distorted meaning of it. In conclusion, The Catholics is an underrated film that presented a scenario where only the second coming of Christ would save the church's faithful, as everything became fundamentally unstable beyond all recognition. And yes, I have to use an alternative wording for the acronym FUBAR, because this film is depicting a FUBAR situation in the church. On that note, I end today's podcast. I would like to thank you all for listening. The recording for this episode would be available on YouTube and Spotify and on Substack with further plans to extend to other platforms, so um, make sure to check uh, check out for that. It may take a long time, but you'll know when it happens. Now, all of the materials I have referenced for this episode would be listed in the recording's description and in the the show notes as well. Now, if you think there are things that I might not have included in, in this recording or if you want to have your say about the matter, please feel free to leave them in the comments below if applicable. Now, also, before you go, please make sure to to like this video and share this around if you're on YouTube and subscribe to my channel, Intrepid Ian Reñon, and ring the notification bell by selecting all so that you wouldn't miss miss out on whatever future car, future content I may create. I am also a spot on Spotify and on Substack, as, as I said, 
and please follow me along as well there for more podcast episodes and for more written articles uh, for the case of Substack because I am not just in, in integrating uh, the Intrepid podcast in Substack. I have used it, used that as a platform for all of my written content, especially those I haven't recorded but is very much uh, but is very much relevant enough to be posted there. Anyway, with all that said, this is Intrepid Ian Rignon reminding you to at all times be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Until then, look alive, stay alive, be kind to yourself and to each other, and pray for me and for everyone else. Let us pray for each other if you believe. That's what I'm asking. That's the only thing that I'm asking. And as always, thank you for tuning in. From here in Intrepid HQ, see you next time for another talk here on the Intrepid Podcast. Ian out.